we know what it takes to instill into every person a common set of healthy insights and behaviors that bring extraordinary cohesion. The term flip training came out of education. It's a best practice because educators found that students would only learn information long enough to pass a test when they were taught passively and in only one pass. So they found that if they gave the students content first on their own to review it, reflect on it, and write about it, and then come back to the classroom the next day to talk about it with their classmates and look at its relevance, make sure they understood it, and talk about how they'd apply it, the information stuck. The students owned and applied the content. So in flip training, even though it's got the word training in it, it's really multiple exposure and engagement with content. So on the training side of it, it's individual online training modules. It's filling out a workbook. It's completing a post-training reflection survey. It's participating in monthly group review sessions, which includes everyone taking a turn leading at least one of these group sessions on a rotational basis. When you do lead a group session, you spend time in a group facilitator prep session with your LifeWorks Systems Oversight Consultant. Other ways that you're engaging with the content include monthly mentoring sessions or joining a committee to find ways to keep integrating the culture concepts and tools or becoming a culture subject matter expert who interviews, onboards, and supports new employees into your culture transformation process. Hopefully with this information in front of you, you can see how many and how varied the touch points we've built into our implementation process. Why is an immersion process crucial? Here's a story that best illustrates this. I worked with a group of 52 leaders who ranged from supervisors up through executives, anyone with direct reports at a company of 550 people. Rather than engage in an immersive process or what we sometimes call a deep dive project, they asked for a review process of all of our more than 30 concepts and tools that are in our culture change process. They asked me to deliver content from the individual online training modules and to do this over Zoom to help them briefly engage in understanding the complete program. I delivered what is now called our leader review. In one of the initial sessions, I introduced some tools that were designed to reduce or eliminate gossip. One of those tools was called the Mind Trust. This is a face-to-face -face agreement between two people in which they make four commitments to each other. They say, I won't say bad things about you behind your back. I'll come to you if I have a problem with you to work it out. If anyone else comes to me to say bad things about you, I'll stop them. And I'll encourage this person to go to you and work it out so that they don't hold on to a grudge or take it to others. The group got really excited about this tool and they agreed when I asked them, to make this commitment to every one of the 52 leaders in their group before the next session. They enthusiastically agreed. At the end of six months, one of the leaders, who was a director over eight other leaders in his department, called me and he said, there are nine of us who were part of the leader review process. We've learned so much from you, but we're really not sure how to apply what we've learned and we're still having a lot of interpersonal problems among us. Can you come in and work with us for a while to help us learn how to apply what we've learned? And I said, I'm going to be talking to your CFO today. I'll find out if there's budget for this. So when I called the CFO and I asked her about this director's request, this is what she told me. Oh, he really needs this. He was in a meeting with his leaders and he was saying bad things about me and it upset two of them so much that they came and told me all the bad things that he said about me. And that's when I asked her, did you ask them if they stopped him because don't they have a mind trust with you? And she said, oh, I didn't think of that. And then I said, then I guess you didn't ask them if they went to him directly because they had a mind trust with him. And she said, no, I didn't think of that either. And then I said, once you knew that this director was saying bad things about you, did you go to him directly and bring it up to him because of the mind trust you have with him? And she said, no, actually, I went and I told on him to his boss. And then she said, I found out he was at the meeting too, and he didn't stop him either, And even though we have a mind trust. And then she said to me, what is wrong with all of us? 
And I was able to say to her, there's nothing wrong with you because you just did a skim of this material. When you received the mind trust, it was like I gave you a tennis racket and you all thought it made you tennis players. The reality is that getting a tennis racket alone is not a replacement for watching the game, learning the nuances and rules, considering all that goes into it, getting out on the tennis court, receiving coaching, falling in love with tennis, and developing muscle memory. It's the time that we put into the learning, the practicing, and really finding the value that makes the skills stick and be useful. And this is why we tell this story, because the immersive process requires four to four and a half hours per month for a year. To master new concepts and manage new behaviors, we must go out of our way to learn them. Otherwise, what's learned becomes like a new tennis racket, briefly enjoyed and then put away and forgotten.